obviously my fault, Doogie. Well, that's what you get for falling asleep on the job. It'd have been all right if I just started to rain. I didn't know it was quick drying cement. <laughs> we'll need blasting powder to get that off. Huh? <laughs> oh. Here we are, Jim. Ah, this will do the trick, boy. Ah. Yeah. Ah. Oh. Shh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Wriggle your toes, Jim. That'll help you what the aisle do. I'm, I'm doing that. You can't even see. My toes are going up and do like wee pink pistons. <laughs> oh, the aisle's just arrived. Right. Should we give it another wee try? Come on, Jim. Uh, oh, no! No, stop it! You'll have my feet off at the ankles. <laughs> ah, well, if you ask me, lubrication's no use. I don't understand that this is high-grade engine aisle. Says in the tin that it's multi-purpose. Aye, well, so it is. You use it for the engines, the captain uses it for his hair, and I use it for the cooking. <laughs> ah, but it's no use for this job. Have you not gotten free yet, eh? We're going to miss the tide because of this blooming nonsense. What steps have you taken? Well, what steps can I take with that thing around my ankles? <laughs> I'll do, Jim. Oh, it's a terrible thing when I cannot delegate a wee job like this to my subordinates. Oh, just a minute, Captain. I feel obligated to point out that I did not sign on as a ship's surgeon. <laughs> You've been at this job for two hours. Put a sling around him and haul him up to the top of the mast. What for? Well, if they dropped you suddenly, the cement might split. Oh, oh, I might land in my heat. Aye, ah, he could go through the bottom of the boat doing that. You would have a job explaining it to the board of trade. Ha ha, I've got it. Of course, why didn't I think of it before? We'll tie his hands to the funnel and his feet to the winch cable and start the engines. Man, the power in that winch will... <laughs> oh, no, I don't fancy that. Oh, no, Jim, even if it doesn't work, it'll put a good six inches on your height. <laughs> If he parted in the middle, he might become one of these split personalities. <laughs> no, this is a job for the civil authorities. Put a sling on that man. Hey, Dan. Snap Jim off at the ankles. <laughs> I'm very grateful to you, Mr. Gillespie. As a matter of fact, I'll make a point of recommending to all my friends. I'd rather you didn't. Eh? I know there is no need to be modest, Mr. Gillespie. I mean, you could work up a fine wee sideline and getting cement bags off people's feet. Strangely enough, this is the first time I've done it in 20 years. And besides this kind of job, it's it's D class A, what the trade would call hack work. <laughs> I'll just keep hacking away, you're doing fine. <laughs> That's not what I meant, Captain. It is a question of prestige. Normally, I wouldn't touch a job like this. But, well, it's been a bad year for business. But with bingo and higher purchase, people just don't have the money to spend on their dear departed. Ah, tell me that now, eh? Hey, hey, could you not diversify a wee bit and go in for town councillor statues? <laughs> you see, I'm a specialist. Angels is my speciality. In fact, Gillespie's angels are the talk of the trade. Oh, aye, aye. Oh, they're fine, respectable middle-class lasses, I'll grant you that. 
But uh, they don't look much like town councillors, eh? <laughs> Maybe if you cut the wings off. <laughs> I'll think about it. There you are. Oh. You're a free man. Oh. I thought I was in there for life. Well, that's great. Hey. That's marvellous. <laughs> Jim, Jim, remember where you are. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I meant me disrespect, Mr. Gillespie. Ah, <laughs> oh, well. I'm obliged to you, Mr. Gillespie. Uh, uh, one pound, I think you said, eh? Sorry I can't make it more, seeing a bad state of business. Oh, don't talk, Captain. Time was when I had two assistants, having nothing else but cheery buns. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the amount of stock I've got. <laughs> ah, I just can't you shift it. Aye. Ah, you know, it's true enough what they say. The general public cares nothing for the arts. <laughs> but this is the sort of thing that really annoys me. Aye, aye. Fella come running in here a couple of months back and says, Quick, can you note me up a heat stain for my uncle? He's not got long to go and I want it done before he's gone. Oh, and uh, what was all the hurry, eh? Ah, well, you see, the old man had a wee bit of money to leave. And that nephew wanted to impress him. Ah, by Jove, that was smart, eh? <laughs> that would be one in the eye for the other relatives. It was one in the eye for me. I had just finished it when the old man recovered, married his nurse, and the hill three of them emigrated to Australia. <laughs> <laughs> it would serve them right if you posted it onto them with foot putting stamps in it. <laughs> Aye. All I know is that I'm left with a perfect heat stain, barring one wee flaw. Inscribed to J.D. MacDonald. And I haven't had a customer with that name since. Uh, there's no MacDonald's in Glasgow, except maybe a few. Aye. Oh, if it's MacDonald's, you're looking for your better shop around the Highlands. The Highlands is fair all alive with MacDonald's. If they're alive, they'll move on to heat stain. Ah, <laughs> uh, you try the Highlands, Mr. Gillespie. Yeah. I'm telling you, there are places in the Highlands that are so overrun with McDonald's they have to put them down once a year by shooting them. <laughs> Is that a fact? Man, company directors come up from London for the open season. <laughs> oh, you may be right. Oh, but I can't go trail around the Highlands carrying this thing. I have my business to look after. Aye, aye, just so, just so. <laughs> You know, it, it just so happens that uh, I'm, uh, I'm heading up that way on my next voyage. Oh, aye. Mm -hmm. oh, maybe we can do each other a favour. Just, just feel that heat stain. Uh -huh. That's the finest quality marble. Uh -huh. And look at the grain, two inches thick. It's all hand-chiselled. That's no rubbish. That's worth 60 pounds of anybody's money. It's yours for 25. Oh, I'm sure it's worth it, aye, aye, but... Uh, well, it might just take some time before I, I find a dead MacDonald with the right initials, eh? Could I not take it on a sale or return basis? Oh, no, no, no. Sorry, Captain. No, I don't do business like that. Twenty-five pounds. It's, it's an investment. Aye, well, I suppose you could look at it that way. Aye, 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 aye. Ah. Done for twenty-five pounds. As you say, done. <laughs> oh, th th there's just one thing, Captain. No, 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 I'm going to be quite honest about this. I had to do the job in such a hurry that there's, well, a wee flaw in it. What you might call a slip of the chisel. Yeah, well, I don't see it. And I don't suppose the grieving relatives will notice it, seeing they'll be having their hankies up at their eyes. Well, now, don't come back here and say I didn't tell you about it. Ah, it's a pleasure to do business with an honest man, Mr. Glass. Ah, uh, well, if you'll just come into my office. All right. Uh, uh, Captain. I, uh, uh, Jim, uh, you just stay here and load the stone onto the bogey. I'll go and settle up with Mr. Gillespie. Oh, by Jove, Doogie and McFay will be fair impressed with this stroke of business acumen. <laughs> yeah. Just when you're ready. 
on train. Just keep going. Don't leave it yet. Gently, no. Ah! <laughs> my toe, it moved my toe. Get it up, Captain, get it up. Hey, John, don't do this suggestion. You might lift it up a wee bit so to get his toe <laughs> Just when you're ready. <gasps> it's pulp. It's just a flat lump of mutilated flesh and splintered bones. <laughs> I knew it. I said that ill luck would come from bringing that thing on board. <laughs> Dump it over the side like I told you, para handy. That taught me the same kind of accident could have happened from a sling load of bricks. <laughs> I'm telling you it's an old seafaring tradition that headstones are bad luck cargoes. Ah, you and your old seafaring traditions, you just make them up to suit yourself. <laughs> Like saying it's bad luck sailing on a Wednesday because you've got a Masonic social on the Thursday. Everybody knows that headstones on boats is bad luck. These things belong to folk that's dead. Dead? Will you listen to him? The man that one's intended for is more alive than you are. He's running around the Australian bushes chasing kangaroos. <laughs> I'm not standing at that windshaw again. Will you dismiss me? What's going on here? Ah! Doogie has just thought up a new seafaring tradition. Oh, no, another one. It's a well-known fact that headstones and boats mean bad luck. All oh, right enough. It's superstitions that hold back the masses. Ah, well, you'll see. <laughs> Don't listen to him, Captain. Oh, you must admit it's a bargain at 25 pounds. 25 pounds? You didn't have 25 pence yesterday. <laughs> Did you come into some money? Ah, well, in a sense, eh, Dan, aye, aye, aye. Oh, you can't go wrong buying a thing like this. That was why I wanted my good friends to share in my good fortune. Well, no, that's very thoughtful of you, Captain. But where did you get the money? <laughs> the wages. <laughs> You picked up your wages this morning. Take it back. It's an investment, Dan. Take it back. Ah, oh, damn me, you would only have spent the money on drink. Take it back. By to the board of trade's going to hear about this. Get that thing back this minute. It is no use. The man is shut for the half day and we are sailing on the next day. Not with that thing. And not without our wages. Ah, oh, damn me, where is your spirit of initiative, eh? It is the sinews of trade and private enterprise that keep the capitalist system going. We are merchant adventurers, that's what we are. Free trade, <laughs> free butters. I mean, if, if Captain Cook hadn't wanted to trade with the natives, America would never have been found, and we are wondering what chewing gum was. <laughs> Mr. Gillespie said that it was worth 60 pounds. That's a good profit, eh? Ah, you see, even a common deckhand recognises the potentialities. Now, look, we got this cheap because it was on his hands and there's a wee scratch on it you cannot even see. Oh, I saw right away, Captain. <laughs> there's a wee flaw right enough, but it's not just a scratch. What is it? He's spelled MacDonald with two N's. <laughs> Oh, I've been telling you for the past week, there are no McDonald's in Scotland that spells their name with two N's. There's maybe foreign McDonald's in China and places <laughs> get up to things like that. But there's none here. No, and I'm very sorry, Captain, but I'm not taking that stone ruin people's doors again. <laughs> I find it very embarrassing having the wee boys running after me shouting, Dan, Dan, the Undertaker's man. <laughs> Oh, it's just a, a question of patience. I mean, if all else fails, we can raffle it. No. <laughs> Put it over the side, Parahani, before it's too late. I'm telling you, it's bad luck cargo. You'll see. All my prophecies is coming true. Prophecies? <laughs> Will you listen to him, prophet? Him that hasn't picked a win on the past ten years. <laughs> no need to laugh about things you don't just understand. There's lots of us Highland men have the gift of second sight. Second sight, double visions, men like it. <laughs> I not only when you've had a bucket. Here, I've got it. Could you not put a PS at the bottom? A what? J.D. MacDonald. P.S. Please excuse the spelling. <laughs> 
Ah, uh, Jim, Jim, you know, you haven't just got the intellect for making suggestions. <laughs> but nevertheless, I will take it upon myself to teach the rudiments of free enterprise and salesmanship. Oh, I'd be very grateful to you, Captain. Ah, uh, you're the only one who has any faith in me, Jim, so I must ask your help. Do you think you could carry a grave responsibility? Oh, I can't. Right, you can carry the stone. Come on. in the police station, charged with stealing a headstone. The police station. Well, I think they've come to a pretty pass when honest citizens can't walk along the road carrying a headstone without being arrested by the police. Did they treat me roughly, Captain? Hey, did they come the old rubber host after that let them do any? <laughs> I'm not the one to stand by while my comrades become victims of police brutality. Brutality? They were drinking tea and eating ginger snaps when I walked out. <laughs> they were a bit mean with the sugar. What are these marks on Sonny Jim's face? Oh, he let me have a shot at his fingerprint set. <laughs> now, Dan is right. It's the principle that matters. One word from me to the Board of Trade and that young constable would be stripped of his rank. Oh, don't do that, Captain. Uh, Drummed out the force with his plastic buttons pulled off while the Argyle Constabulary pulled his pipe band playing. Uh, Loch Haber no more. <laughs> I've seen it happen. And it would be no more than he deserved. I mean, accusing you of stealing a heat steam. What would you want it for? He thought we were going to make it into a coffee table. <laughs> and the vehicle's part. Damn me, we haven't got room for the compass. Minus. <laughs> Here it could be done. I mean, just turn it blank side up, put four legs on it, and you've got a lovely coffee table. <laughs> Nobody would know what it was unless they were under it. <laughs> I've got a better idea. Put it over the side, Parahandi, before it brings any more grief. Look at all the trouble it's caused already. I broke my toe. You've lost all our wages. And Sonny Jim has been branded as a criminal and got his face dirty. <laughs> Gypsy petrol engines at it again. <laughs> I'm 
Man, I wouldn't like to think of the terrible tragedy fate has in store for you. Hey, hey, watch it, watch it. <laughs> Jove, it's bound to be the worst, seeing you're the last. <laughs> Just chuck it, watch it. <laughs> ah, that's enough, Dougie. I've done me, it's more than enough. Listen. I am going to sell that headstone for money, even if it kills one of us. <laughs> well, if you don't sell it soon, I'm getting the next steamer back to Glasgow. And I'm not setting foot on this boat again until that stone's out of here. Look, uh, Dougie, just, just one more try. Just one, eh? Look, I know for a fact there's a whole clan of McDonald's on the other side of the bay we haven't even touched yet. I'm no carrying that thing all the way around there. It's miles. No, you can't get the puffer in because there's no pier there. Oh, damn me, all those objections, eh? We've got a rowing boat, haven't we? It's been a relevation to me, a relevation. <laughs> friends, you called yourselves friends. Not one of you was prepared to give me the kiss of life. We did our best, Dan. <laughs> oh, you did our best, did your best to try and kill me. <laughs> Whose idea was it to stick a tube down my throat and connect it to the bilge pump? <laughs> Dan, it seemed a good idea at the time. It nearly sucked my inside out. <laughs> Sorry, Dan. <coughs> Dan! That's Doogie away back to Glasgow on the steamer. Ah, by George, it's a terrible thing. A man's friends desert him because of some blooming superstition. Listen. I would have been on that steamer way if I had had the fare. He's convinced me that stains bad luck cargo, and the sooner you dump it out of the side, the better. Only this time, see that I'm not under it. <laughs> not thrown away 25 pounds worth of good headstone. No, not dead right, you're not. As soon as we get back to Glasgow, you're going to see that man Gillespie and get our money back. Are you sure you'll not have a wee cup of tea, Dougie? Eh, no thanks, Jim, because I'm not staying. I only came down to see if you'd all got back safely. Oh, aye, we're all right. I kept looking in the papers to see if there'd been a big sea disaster. <laughs> <laughs> Most likely it'll happen on the next voyage. Aye, well, I'll not be involved in it. I told Parahandy Street I'm not sailing aboard this boat again while that stone's on board. I see it's still in the hold. Uh, the captain's going to ask Mr. Gillespie to take it back. Aye, uh, some hope he's got with that rotten chiseler. <laughs> Don't know, Dan. He's not a bad chiseler. And he makes lovely angels. <laughs> now I know. If it isn't himself, eh? Making himself at home as if he was still a ship's maid and hadn't deserted his post, eh? Uh, it's yourself, Captain. Uh -huh. You're not absolutely terrified to be standing on this ship in case you'll sink, eh? Even though we are tied up at the docks, old man, there's courage for you, are. Eh? And what have you been doing with yourself this last week while I've been sailing the ship single-handed with only Sonny Jim to help me? Oh, this and that. Come to the point, Parahandy. Did Gillespie give you the 25 quid back? 25 quid? He gave me 50 pounds. <laughs> 50 pounds? Yeah, 50 pounds. A triumphant vindication of the capitalist system. I don't hear you singing the red flag now, eh? <laughs> well, you see, it just so happens that, that, that a, a man went into Gillespie's yard last week and ordered a stone exactly like the one we've got. A McDonald's with two ends. Ah. Ah, there was a mistake in his birth certificate or something. <laughs> I don't just know if it was the civil servants got the spelling wrong or if it was the minister that baptised him had a stutter. <laughs> But anyway, 
Gillespie wants the stone box, so naturally I had to put a wee bit on for storage and transportation. <laughs> you know, I could hardly believe it, Captain. Oh, I have some that only believes in ignorant superstitions. I'm not naming any names, Dougie. Uh -huh. And some that cannot see true business acumen when it's in front of them. I admit I was wrong, Captain. I should never have doubted you. I told you right from the start you were on to a good thing, Captain. <laughs> I mean, anybody could see that. Oh, no, no, not anybody, no, no. You've got to be able to see your opportunities, I... Oh, man, if I had went in for a businessman and not a master mariner, I might have been the head of the P&O lines by this time. <laughs> hey! When you're ready, Mr Gillespie! Come down and have a wee half. Here. Mr. Gillespie's here. Aye, oh, well, uh, he wants to examine the stone and see it isn't broken. Oh. Well, it seems to be all right, Captain. I'll make arrangements to have it picked up. Aye, aye, aye. Oh, yeah, you know Sonny Jim, eh? Oh. Uh huh. And that's uh, McPhail, the engineer, and Dougie, the mate. We have met before, haven't we? Aye, it's yourself, Mr. Gillespie. Aye, and it's yourself, Mr. MacDonald, with two ends. <laughs> the right bunch of twisters. <laughs> Aye, and if I catch any of you near my place again, you'll all be needing a heat stain. I was only trying to help, Captain. So I went along to his yard last week. And I told him that my name was MacDonald with two A's. <laughs> oh, I see, Dougie, I see. Ah, and I'm grateful for it, I. Ah, oh, the sin of pride is a terrible thing, eh? And maybe it's just as well I'm not the head of the P&O line. <laughs> I've learned my lesson. Ah, well, we better get rid of that stone. It's only cluttering up the boat. Aye. <clears throat> Tell me, we've only tried the Clyde coast. <laughs> I mean, there must be thousands of McDonald's away north of here. You know, way up in the islands like Skye and Mull and Jura. There's maybe even McDonald's over on the east coast, in places like Aberdeen. And... Well, we haven't even touched in the centre yet. <laughs> hey, where are you going? <laughs> 